Greetings to you all, thank you for coming along to this video. I thought I'd do this video because there's a lot of confusion with this subject and there really shouldn't be. There are many individuals who think that the church actually go through the tribulation period and many will argue, well, the tribulation period is um, the great tribulation which is the second half, three and a half years of that period. So let's just call it the 70th week, as we see in the book of Daniel. So the 70th week of Daniel, 70 weeks has been allotted for Israel to come to the Lord by going through a great grave amount of trouble. And this period of time is also called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob was also renamed Israel by the Lord, and this is a time period where Israel, Jacob, will go through a lot of stress in order to call out to the Lord, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and Christ will come at his second coming and will redeem Israel, save Israel, and the millennium Christ's reign on earth for a thousand years will begin now, we, we have to keep in mind that um, there are a lot of views on this topic. There are differing views, but it really should not be a confusing issue. It's quite simple. The, the clues are there, shall we say, okay, that the evidence is there in Scripture. I mean, let's forget the fact that, well, let's not forget the fact, but just the fact is there anyway, already freestanding, that God always takes out his righteous before his wrath is poured out. And we all we already know in God's word that we won't be here for the wrath. I mean, here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, we have John in heaven writing the things that must happen hereafter and what Christ meant saying that to John when he says come Jesus said come up here that is the rapture of the church Jesus showed John the rapture of the church and I will show you the things that must happen hereafter hereafter what the church age so Unless you also believe in dispensations, this is going to be difficult to understand. And Jesus says, because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Now, we've got to look at these points here. OK, let's, let's pick these points out. Because you kept my command to persevere, persevere through what? Not the tribulation. Jesus isn't talking about that. Jesus here is talking about the perseverance that the saints have had all throughout the church age. Those who have wrestled with the devil and the powers and principalities all throughout the church age since Christ gave up his spirit on the cross for the sins of the world and the paraclete. Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost and indwelled believers. Ever since then, the church age has been struggling to stay um, an authority in the world against Satan's, well, world. This is Satan's world we're in. And, but, you know, I, I, Satan is the god of this world. Even God himself said Satan's the god of this world. He's the ruler of this world. And we will have trouble because of that. And that's not tribulation with a big capital T. It's a small t trouble, small t tribulations. We will have that. We will be pushed around and persecuted, even killed. But the church cannot be overcome. And that's another thing that will happen in the 70th week tribulation period. The church will be overcome by Satan. So God's promise won't come really up to much, will it, really? Uh, God wouldn't be doing a very good job if he says, well, 
Now, the, the gates of hell will not prevail over the church, but it will in this period of time. So the church clearly isn't here. So it also says, I will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. This is that 70th week period. And it's going to be a test to those who dwell on the earth. Since when has the church been called the dwellers on the earth or earth dwellers? That, that These are key points that we have to look at in order to ascertain where we are with um, the post-tribulation doctrine because this video is looking at the post-tribulation um, doctrine and kind of asking questions, well, why? Because I'm going to pick out why this would be a pretty silly idea because I've got the scripture here to prove that um, the church aren't here in that dreaded period of time where God's wrath will be poured out onto the world, onto the earth. And we see with um, Lot, with, with Noah, many others, I mean, Daniel in the lion's den, the, the righteous have either been protected through or taken out before. Elijah was taken before Noah's flood, okay? The, the angel came down in a fiery chariot to whisk up Elijah. So I believe Elijah is a form of the church. I do believe Noah and his family are a form foretelling, shall we say, of na the nation of Israel. I mean, th th this is clearly um, telling us that God takes out his righteous before um, serious business comes down from God. And from the first seal is God's wrath. That That's straight off the bat. And there, there is no specific place you can pinpoint anywhere in the 70th week where the church can be raptured to heaven because that would just be conjecture and just shooting fish in the barrel, should we say. You, you can't really go along with that because we have proof here. And while people are looking for, well, where does it, it say the word rapture in the Bible? Well, in the Latin Bible, the Vulgate would give you rapture. It's, it's the English translation from the Latin Vulgate, rapture, rapturus, rapturo. It's the English translation of the, that word. And the English translation comes out as rapture, but it's also in the Greek harpazo, a forceful pulling out of the world. I mean, th this, is, this is clear. So as I'm reading from the New King James Version, we can look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. And it reads, Then we who are alive and remain at the end of the church age, again, you've got to understand dispensations or you're going to get lost. Dispensations means the course of action throughout the Bible that God takes to bring in a higher dispensation in order to carry out his plan for the redemption of mankind and the eventual defeat of Satan, essentially. So that's what dispensations are. Like you have the law and, you know, you have uh, sin offerings and things like that. Then you have Christ coming down to the earth. And then after that, you, you have um, the dispensation of Christ's millennial reign, which is the last dispensation. And the grand tester after that is the great white throne judgment to test the final remnants of people who still rebel. And these are dispensational periods of time where God uses our period of history to bring in a higher dispensation, as it were, to redeem us because he loves us. Amen. So 
I'll continue with this. Then, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Many people stick that at the end of the 70th week. Right at the end, Armageddon, that's when this happens. Or this happens when you die. Well, we meet the Lord in the air. I mean, when, every time somebody dies, they don't meet the Lord in the air. That, that doesn't happen. This is a specific time, okay, when this is going to happen. There is going to be a resurrection. You can't get a, any way around that. It's going to happen. And this does happen before the 70th week even begins. Right now, we have the Holy Spirit working within believers when the paraclete came down once jesus rose up to heaven to be at the right hand side of the father where he's been for the best part of two thousand years the paraclete holy spirit came down to indwell inhabit shall we say all believers the body of christ the church must leave in order for the Holy Spirit to move out of the way to allow the Antichrist to be controlled by Satan. I mean, of course, if the church is in the world, we will foil the Satan Antichrist plan. He won't be, we'll, we'll just point him out and say, oh, there he is, and just, just push him down, push him back. I mean, the, the church has to be out of the way. That, that's the only way this is going to happen. And the Holy Spirit is the church, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. For the mystery, here, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and it has been since, well, at least when, when Christ was walking the earth, the word in the flesh, and in his first advent, the, the spirit of mystery of lawlessness is already at work and it's a, it is a mystery satan already has a man in waiting and he or, or, always has because he knows that this period is coming satan and all the top top elites in this world i think ones at the very top just under satan probably know that this is going to happen and or maybe not but the church definitely know this is going to happen and those who say the rapture is going to happen or we're a bunch of wackos or whatever well it's going to happen satan knows it's going to happen he's preparing for it all you have to do is look at the alien movies and space movies and i do believe that is going to be satan's excuse to where millions of people suddenly disappear to that would be a perfect reason excuse shall we say to bring in global control it's clear. You, there's no way you can't see that. I'll continue. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Have you noticed that word he? It's got a capital. He is describing the Lord, the third part of the triune trinity Godhead. The Holy Spirit is seen here as a, a capital H. He, I mean, you do have some translations that, that don't hit on this. So the New King James Version, I applaud for this because it stays true to, I do believe this, the New King James stays true to the uh, true word of, the, of God. And um, many will disagree but I think uh, the New King James and um, the NASB, the New American Standard Version, that, that does stay true also to uh, God's word. But he, it, that is the Holy Spirit who now restrains will do so until he, Holy Spirit, is taken out of the way. We have the Holy Spirit in us and we have to leave from this world in order for all this to happen 
I mean, it's, it's the only way it's going to happen um, by the act of the church essentially being pulled out of this world by Christ shouting through the heavens like the sound of a trumpet, like John told us in Revelation chapter 4, respectively, when John said, the, the voice of the Lord God himself was like the sound of a trumpet saying, come up here and I will show you the things that must happen hereafter. And meta tauta in the Greek, hereafter, which means after these things. After these things, what things? Well, the life of John, the, what's going on now in John's time and indeed our time, which is the church age period. Another puzzling aspect as to why the, the post-tribulation theory of the rapture being at the end of the, the 70th week tribulation period, it, it, this just, I do believe, just refutes that. Because when you study the individuals mentioned in these two verses, you come to the conclusion that um, they can be no one else, really, aside from redeemed mankind. I, I studied the 24 elders from the 24 courses of King David's priesthood. Um, you look in First Chronicles 24, uh, verses 1 to 6, Samuel 21, and many other places. This also covers all believers right through the church age and I came to, to my conclusion that the church are actually in heaven before the first seal is actually broken and let's look at this you know Revelation chapter 4 verses 4 to 5 around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads now we'll concentrate on the first verse here for now 24 uh, the 24 courses i mean there's 24 elders around the throne and they they have a rotation there so an elder sits for a certain amount of time and then is replaced by another elder, so on and so forth. So it's not just 24 people. This is multitudes of the church age, all believers of the church age, those who are alive and remain, those who died in Christ, the dead rise first, those who are alive and remain are caught up to heaven to meet the Lord in the air, like I just read in First Thessalonians 4. Uh, uh, we we see the proof here that these individuals that they're, they're not angels because angels don't have crowns on their heads and they don't sit around the throne and they're not men. Uh, what's depicted here are men, elders sitting around the throne clothed in white robes, and they have crowns of gold on their heads. That's an indication of redeemed mankind that have just been to the being the seat judgment of Christ and been given their rewards according to their works on earth with regards to the Holy Spirit being indwelled in them to achieve such works, or I like to call fruit bearing, because works can confused sometimes. Also what I find interesting here is that we read and from the throne proceeded lightning thunderings and voices. This part intrigues me because it says seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. Now the seven spirits of God are in the world right now. The seven lamps of fire, the churches. This represents the churches. I mean, you, you read through the epistles of Paul, he wrote to the, the seven churches in Asia Minor. These are the seven lamps of the Holy Spirit over each and every church through the church age. 
So here in Revelation chapter 4, before anything's happened, before any seals have been opened, these seven lamps of fire are burning before the throne. Why aren't they on earth? Because the church aren't on earth. They're in heaven, in Revelation chapter 4. So how on earth can the church be still here throughout the 70th week, right up until Armageddon when Jesus comes back down, touchdowns, touches down rather on the Mount of Olives and sheep and goat judgment and all that happens. I mean, it, it makes no sense. And I will also go into why that doesn't make sense. In John chapter 14, verses 2 to 3, Jesus made a beautiful, beautiful promise to his believers. And it is a great promise. And Jesus isn't a liar. I mean, he says here, if it were not so, I would I would have told you. Basically saying, well, if, you know, if it wasn't true, I wouldn't have said, you know, this is this is the truth. John, John chapter 14, verses 2 to 3. It specifically says, in my father's house, Jesus speaking, are many mansions or dwelling places. Whatever these places look like, I just believe they're going to be very wonderful places because Jesus has been preparing these places for a good part of 2,000 years and I think they're going to be quite spectacular clearly I'll continue if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you now, Jesus goes away he will do that and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and I sorry I and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also. So if the rapture of the church, the resurrection of the saints happens right at the end of the 70th week, the tribulation period, it's all over. We go up, okay? We, we go up only to come down again, like a, a big U-turn in the sky, okay? And that makes no sense at all. It states quite clearly that Jesus Christ went away to prepare a place in heaven, Father's house. It's not on earth, for his believers. And that Jesus would return and receive his believers, the body, bride of Christ, to himself. Unto himself, rather, that where he is, there we may be also. So, so it makes zero sense as to why Jesus would waste his time preparing a place for us if we're not going to go there. If we're going to go zzz, zzz, just up, down, straight away at the end of the tribulation period. I mean, how do we get up there? We don't build a ladder. We don't crawl up there. He takes us before all this even happens. So there's no way we can spend time in the Father's house in heaven if we go up to heaven or the sky because it meet the Lord in the air. So we do meet the Lord in the air. We meet him in the air. So if we get and get up on white horses and giddy up Ned or whatever your horse's name is and you come back down to the earth you meet the lord in the air then you come straight back down again that's meeting him meeting him in the air and not going to heaven at all so this um this verse two and three of john chapter 14 is not needed you may as well tear it out your bible because if you believe in a post-tribulation rapture of the church of jesus christ you may as well tear this out of the bible because it would make no sense so we can look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 14. This is what's going to happen. At, at the end, this is where 
we are mentioned again, we being members of the church, the body and the bride of Christ, we are not mentioned between the chapters 4, 5 to 19. So in between, we're not mentioned. I mean, you, you do have saints mentioned, of course, but you, you look through the... Uh, uh, the first three chapters of Revelation and then you look through the rest of the book of Revelation and you come to a conclusion and that conclusion is that um, you have mentioned at um, the end of um, Revelation chapter 3 when the spirit stops speaking to the churches because at the at the end of chapter three of the book of revelation it ends where jesus finishes talking to the churches because that's the end of the church age he says he who hath an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches I mean, after that it's, it's focusing on israel and the, and the earth dwellers not the church and would-be saints on the earth Where's the Holy Spirit? It's it's mainly in heaven, but it's also omnipotent, so it's still in the earth, but the Holy Spirit isn't restraining anymore and not acting as the church anymore. So we read later in the book of Revelation, he who hath an ear, let him hear. And that's it. No church mentioned whatsoever. So throughout the the book of Revelation, the, the church is mentioned. So Revelation chapter 19, verse 14, and the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. Who, If you believe in a post-tribulation rapture of the church of Jesus Christ, so if you do, explain this away. You, you'll probably say, well, they're... they're armies that they're, they're the they're, they're the angels well these, these this is the church this is the bride of christ they are returning clothed in fine linen which is represents the righteous acts of the saints and we're following him jesus on white horses it's simple i mean i mean you, you can't escape it okay this this is the church coming back. We didn't go up there and say, oh, hi, Jesus, and come straight back down again. That would be what Dr. Chuck Misler once called um, <laughs> a, a snack lunch. The, the, the wedding supper of the Lamb would be a snack lunch. I mean, many, many people debate whether the supper is on earth and in heaven. I do believe we dine with Jesus in heaven, and we also meet together and have a feast on earth also i mean everything happens in heaven folks i mean the 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 dressing up for us um and the preparation for the marriage and the marriage happening is part of the bema seat bema seat judgment happening and occurring we we go up and meet we all congregate in in the air the dead in Christ and those who are alive and remain were caught up together and we meet the Lord in the air. Then we're taken to heaven by our groom. We, the bride, go with him and we go to a place in heaven while all the wrath has been poured out on earth. That's what is um, going to happen. And many people try to get around this and and say you know i mean people may even argue when the scripture is clear in front of them i mean i do not understand the post-tribulation view whatsoever i, I don't i don't understand it it makes no sense this makes perfect sense and the scripture that i've given on this video just goes into that I just wanted to get this message out there and just say that this is the truth and it's going to happen before the seals are even broken. I mean, 
as soon as you study the 24 elders and you come to the conclusion, the biblical conclusion, I might add, that these are the redeemed of all those who believe in Christ, the redeemed from the church age also will be caught up together at that appointed time. And I do believe that will be what uh, Dr. Andy Woods would call a slam dunk <laughs> um, proof of the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ being a pre-tribulational event. There's no getting around it. I mean, people, a lot of people who proclaim that the tribulation has to be gone through, with the church have to go through it. A lot of these individuals, they, they do believe in a kingdom now theology. They do have a very um, preparatorial mindset. They're preppers. And there's nothing wrong with prepping. Don't get me wrong. I mean, everybody needs to prep to some kind of um, degree in life. But Jesus didn't tell us to prep. There's nothing in the words Jesus tells us. He says we shouldn't fear and you know, we shouldn't you know, think about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear. And he tells us to look up and think heavenly because that's where the church belong, in heaven. We are a heavenly body. Israel are an earthly body. Israel has been promised a land. The church hasn't been promised a land. Israel has. The Jews were promised their land. Jacob and, and yeah, Isaac, Abraham, they're promised the land. The church were not. The church also are completely divided from Israel. Many people like to, especially post-tribulation um, claimers, believers, they, they do like to proclaim Matthew 24 as the, the huge reason as to why the church uh, go through the tribulation period. But the, the thing is, Matthew 24, 25 is solely about the Jewish people and Israel. Many people argue with me about that, but um, the fact of the matter is that Jesus was asked the question on the Mount of Olives. Master, what, what, what are these things that are going to happen? Tell us about the end. And it's because they were looking at the second temple, standing, that King Herod made look more spectacular he did it up to to glam it up shall we say and and it looked spectacular and and the the his disciples were clearly proud of this this building and jesus said there will come a time where no stone will be left on top of another it will be absolutely destroyed and decimated and and they were shocked to hear that and then jesus goes on to speak about the future of the Jewish people in Matthew 24, 25. That's where it leads from, a Jewish perspective in regards to the temple. Jesus doesn't start suddenly talking about the church. That happens in John 12, 14, respectively, in the Olivet Discourse. Sorry, the Upper Room Discourse. The Olivet Discourse deals with the Jewish people and their future and what is going to happen in the 70th week coming up to the uh, tribul the uh, second coming of Christ. And when Jesus spoke of the fig tree generation, they are the generation that will see the prophecy fulfilled. I mean, the fig tree generation has nothing to do with the church. Many people try and make links to when... Israel became a nation in 1948, that, that's got nothing to do with it. That doesn't determine when the rapture will happen. It's got nothing to do with the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ whatsoever. I mean, Apostle Paul didn't say that we should uh, uh, wait for Israel to become a nation. I mean, the rapture could have happened in, in Paul's time, in Paul's ministry. I mean, I won't go into that, but uh, I've already gone too far into that already, but... Um, the, the word speaks for itself.
Israel and the church are two different entities completely. Church, heavenly body, Israel, an earthly body. Okay, so, so you have this period of events coming and we see the world in a complete state and we're we're seeing um we're seeing us getting closer to prophecy starting to be um fulfilled and i believe the church age uh, dr chuck misler also uh the late great dr chuck, chuck misler he he called the church age also the interval and I understand why he called the church age the interval period, because the interval period, church age, is where um, yeah, Isaiah, let's use Isaiah, for example, he saw, say, the mountaintops of prophecy. The dips and valleys in between the mountains were mysteries. And the church age is that mystery between the valley of the mountaintops to where prophecy ends and prophecy begins again. I believe, from what the scripture tells me, the clock has stopped while the church is on the earth. Prophecy has stopped right in its tracks. And prophecy will not be fulfilled again until the church leave the earth and go up to heaven. And God concentrates on Israel because future prophecy is all about the nation of Israel not the church of Jesus Christ. That is why the interval period of the church age is a time of, um, I do believe, how Satan is working the nations together or to come together as one. And we're seeing that in the world happening faster and faster each, each day, each second, in fact. We see it happening even more and more and more and more. Every time you look at the news, it's almost as if they're reading off the hymn sheet of the book of Revelation and we're seeing the technology just going off the pages, just zipping by and, and we're just seeing the B system coming into play and the closer we get to the 70th week, the nearer the rapture of the church is and um, Dr. Andy Woods says, puts it this way, and I, I find it quite poignant and quite, quite good. When you see the Christmas decorations going up, you know Christmas is near. And this, this is a very American way of looking at it because we don't have Thanksgiving here in the UK. But you see the decorations going up um, a couple of months before Christmas, but you know that thanksgiving comes first so you see the signs of christmas in this case tribulation period the 70th week of daniel we see the run-up to that the, 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 the it's all the stage is being set up guys we, we can see that and that's kind of like the decorations going up okay so we see that happening and we have thanksgiving in this case the rapture happens even before that so we know that the rapture is going to happen. I mean, the rapture isn't near. The rapture is next. I mean, that is the kickstart. That's the starting gun for Satan. That that fires, and that that's when Satan starts running because he has seven years to um, get this earth into complete turmoil, into the way he wants it to be, and uh, that. That's why they keep talking of specific dates. The globalists saying things like by 2025, we need this to happen. By 2030, 2050, we need this to happen. I mean, I don't know when this is all going to kick off and start. I mean, I said to people, look, I know things look pretty startling now. And it could get a lot more startling. It could. It really could. And we we could still have another 20 years yet. It just, it depends. I mean, God could suddenly turn everything around and, and just pull everything back and just say, no, not yet. I want to save a few more people. This is God's show, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't our show. This is our Lord in heaven deciding when these things 
should take place. And uh, praise the Lord that um, we have such a kind and loving and gracious, righteous God who wants to pull his righteous out of the world before his hand of judgment comes down. And like I said at the beginning, in, beginning of this video, God has always done that throughout the Bible. He has taken out the righteous always before his hand of wrath has come down. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it's given you some encouragement and um, I hope those who look at the post-tribulation view and think it makes sense, um, I hope this has changed your mind because personally speaking, I, I, would, I would be miserable if I had to um, think that I had to go through all of this. I mean, I came from a verging on a new age background. I, I came near enough a gnat's breath away from being a full on new age believer. And, and I did meditate a few times and I was into all that carry on that nonsense. But praise the Lord, he pulled, Jesus pulled me out of it and shook me up and said, no, don't do this come to me and I did it's the best decision I ever made and they know this is going to happen they 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 know that um they they're clinging on to they they think ships are coming to take people off the earth that's that's exactly what the, the, is, they think is going to happen that's the deception that they think is real but we know the real truth and those who believe in a post-tribulation rapture and those who did believe, do believe in um, New Age, and I did believe in that theory, I was really scared, terrified. But now I'm not scared at all because I trust my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to make good on his promise that um, he's prepared a place for us and that um, where he is we may be also. So yes, thank you for watching this video. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Um, if you dislike the video, no problem. We don't always have to agree on the same things. We are allowed to disagree. That's the thing. I mean, it seems like this day and age, I mean, disagreeing seems to be the biggest problem ever. But it's not. People can disagree with me all they wish, but you know the evidence is there, guys. I've just showed you the word, and it makes sense. A post-tribulation rapture make, makes no sense at all. It is just not in God's nature to put his bride through um, such a period of time. I mean, it's, why, would, why would God do that to his bride? It, it wouldn't be very, <laughs> very... Um, nice of the Lord to um, drag his bride through the mincing machine and then uh, say hey let's come go and have dinner I'll clean up your black eye for you you know it's, it's just not going to work it just, just makes no sense so um, thank you for watching um, if you want to know any more on the new age part that I spoke about I have a video where I took an excerpt from the teachings of the Palladians from um, Koinonia House on YouTube. And that goes through also point to point detail of what they, the, the evil in this world are planning and using as an excuse to fool those who missed the boat, the boat being Christ Jesus. Amen. So um, thank you for watching. Please stay in the word, stay in prayer, love one another and forgive one another as Christ Jesus loves us and has forgiven us. I love you all. God bless you all. Bye for now.